This video is a quick update to show you how I would refactor my form system now that component properties exist. Because before, what we were doing is leveraging subcomponents and base components to make sure that we were minimizing our sources of truth so that we could really easily get things like these icons in front and behind our text and have those be available across all of our components so that we only had one place to make changes. But with component properties, we can leverage Boolean properties and get a lot of that same behavior without the extra layers. Let me show you what I mean. If we crack open this input right here, you'll see at the front, there's an icon left that is hidden. And that icon has a component property right here, which is a Boolean property to show the icon. And I have it hidden by default. Once I have that set up, I can also then add an instance swap to this icon as well. So let me show you what that looks like. Because essentially, this is working kind of like the base component did to begin with. We're nesting that hidden icon in all of our inputs so that when we come in here, change to an input, now I can drill into this input, which I've kept as form child, and I get this little switch here where I can turn on the icon left, which then reveals the instant swap below. So that's really great because I get all of the benefits of base components in addition to this friendly little switch here, and I don't have to add any extra layers to clutter my components. And so I've done that pretty much everywhere here. So all of these components are completely flat. They no longer use base components. And I simply have text and then the relevant icons. And the cool thing is if I want to make changes, it's now pretty freaking easy actually. Like let's say that I want to add a text property here. I can simply select my text, click this little select all matching layers button, and then come down here and add text. And now that property is automatically available on everything right here. Now, before we get into the form component itself, I want to address one more little thing at the subcomponent level. Let's look at these inputs and selects right here, where you'll notice that I have some air states and I also have some success states as well. And these are pretty unique to my normal icons. Because remember, up in here, I have this icon left that has the swap on it. But when it comes to a success state or an air state, I don't actually want those icons to be swapped because those are the only icons that I might be using in my system to indicate success or error. So instead of calling these right icon and attaching the instant swap to them, I renamed it to success icon and air icon. And I've removed the Boolean property and the instant swap property. And the reason is when someone is using my component and we're going to drill into this input here and change it to an error, I don't actually want the designer to be able to remove this icon. This might be a very rigid part of my system. And if I was keeping the Boolean property and the instance swap here, it might confuse designers and ultimately lead them to creating a combination of UI that doesn't actually exist in our system. So this is a great example of when we might want to detach from our component properties in order to help people using our components. Now, remember our form component right here. We ended up having to have eight variants to account for some pretty simple states because all we're really doing is changing up what content is around our subcomponent. Maybe it's a label, button text, helper text, character count, that kind of thing. And remember when we talked about when to use component properties versus when to use variants? This is the perfect example of when component properties make sense because we're customizing what is around the component. And these four options here, really all they need to be is Boolean properties. So when we come up here, this has now taken a large variant set down to a single component and it's very intuitive to use. All we have to do is select the component. We can change any combination of our four variables around it and then hit enter or just double click into the form child where we get the state 
of the selected subcomponent. So if we want to edit the state, we'll do so here. And if we want to change anything about the form itself, including swapping out the component that is contained within, we can do that at the parent level. It is simpler than it has ever been. And most importantly, we get to radically condense our layer lists and our end component matrix. I hope this helps. Component properties are awesome.